Welcome to the late night big breakfast. We... <clears throat> yeah, come a little hot there, Terry. Let off the booze, will you? Sorry, mate. Welcome to the late night big breakfast. It's New Zealand's only late night breakfast show set in a furniture store. It certainly is, Jeremy. Absolutely. And um, our success, our ratings will be judged not just on the ratings themselves, but obviously how much furniture we sell. So I think that's exciting, a real and, challenge. And can I say, fellas, lovely to be working with you both again. Mm. And as you mentioned, Lee, this show is nothing without your input. So send in your selfies, text in, uh, all, all that sort of stuff. Facts. Twitter. Twitter. Facebook. Twitter. 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 Grinder. PayPal. Um, uh, Tinder. 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 Grinder. you said that. Yes. Letters. Uh, Letters. Um, Fax us. Mail, you name it. Love to hear from you. Got your ideas. As I say, it's your show, Jace. We want to hear from you. We want your photos. Got any photos of wacky wild weather? We want to see it. Send your selfies in as well. Manginas. Yeah. Exactly, Jace. And with those selfies, uh, try and pull back a little on the the camel toes and the... Um, the, the, the moose knuckle. Yeah, we've been getting what, a few of those. What's a moose knuckle, Jace? Well, a moose knuckle is the male equivalent of the camel toe. If you imagine a moose knuckle... A man with two tight shorts, there you have it. And, and the camel toe, of course. Oh, let's just bring a picture up of either. We can just get a, an idea of that. Yeah, we don't want too much of these kind of things coming in. We just want to see you guys enjoying the show, watching the show, but I think we've, we've digressed slightly. Certainly. Let's get on with the show and bring on our first guest. It's going on tonight. Well, we all like to get our rod out once in a while. I know I certainly do. Um, especially in the summer, Jace, when it's mm. nice mm. and warm. You take your shirt off and mm -hmm. get out there and get some, mm. get some lotion and get the rod out and really just really just make the most of it. But someone who gets the rod out more than most, I suppose, is our next guest, Matt Watson, fisherman extraordinaire. Welcome to the show, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me. I just interrupted there, Matt. We're just going to go straight to infomercial if we can. Sure. Sitting on the toilet for long periods of time, straining during bowel movements and chronic constipation can put pressure on the veins and the anus and lower rectum. Rectosol is a cooling paste that relieves the discomfort of hemorrhoids within minutes. The new streamlined applicator uses NASA technology, giving you the ability to treat those troublesome hemorrhoids that are just out of reach. Rectosol works up to 25% faster than other leading brands, giving you the freedom to do what you want to do. So get your life and your freedom back with Rectosol. Welcome back. Just joining us, we're with Matt Watson, fisherman extraordinaire. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You got a question, Jerry? I do, actually, Matt. Um, this time of year, obviously, uh, the, the winter, um, it's good for the, the kahawai. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. In, in, in low, low depths? They predate right through the water column, the kahawai. Um, not so much in, in the winter. I think you want to be um, using burley, a bit of ground burley, and sort of bringing them up on the bottom, because they're sort of more around the kelp. Liveies? Yeah, um, not for you the kahawai. So, so you mean a pilch? No, 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 depends on what trace you've got. You mean well, live bait as in... Bait at, at, oh, you mean live bait as in like the balloon you're putting the I'm saying balloon, yeah, either no, you no, get no, 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 you, you, you a yellow tail. No, 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 we're talking bait. Hawaii, it's important you want to put some kind of live bait. As opposed to squid, though. You can't use bird... Look, I might bring someone in on this. We've obviously gone quite in depth with... All of that was wrong. Oh, was it? Yeah. Obviously, we're all quite seasoned fishermen ourselves, and you yeah. just happen to have a, a fishing it, show. It, but can we just get back to the kahawai? Um, the what? The kahawai. Is that a... What sort of fish yeah, is that? Yeah, well, the it's Māori kaha being strong and wai. And wai. And they are, they are a strong fish, too. See if you put a lot of emphasis on... It's kaha, strong. Kaha. You know, kia kaha. Um... Yeah, and it's yeah. important with kahawai that you eat it fresh. It's a, not a, a fish that keeps well and that's... You can even sushi it, can't you? Even do a bit of... Right there on the boat. Uh, sashimi, yes. Yeah. Sushi, yeah. you need the rice and everything. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking quite... about. I've got a rice maker on yeah. my boat. Um, it's, it's a Hutch Wilco rice maker, which I mm. make the rice in, and then I do my um, sushi on the boat. And right. you can do sashimi as well, That's course, nigiri, but... isn't it? Hey? Nigiri. I wouldn't know. I'm not an expert on, on, on sushis and things like that. Sorry, Matt. Can I just interrupt you there for a second? And Lee as well, Jace. Um, and ask you another question, Matt, um, going it's back to fish. related to boat engines, isn't it? No, it's not good. actually. I just wanted to move yeah, yeah, um, Snapper, when did they get AIDS? Good question. 
herpes, perhaps. Is I mean, it herpes? It, there is a marine herpes, um, and it's normally the smaller, like, bait fish that, that get it, and there was a big epidemi uh, yeah, epidemic. Yeah, pilchard. Yeah, pilchard. Yeah, pilchard. Yeah, yeah, the pilchards did, did get wiped out by, by herpes, which is, you know, a big source of um, humour for people like yourself, but it was a very serious thing because... It's you know, no it's fun for herpes, no. let's be honest. No. Been terrible for That's me. Certainly right there, Jeremy. It's no fun for the fish or the fishermen herpes. Um, thanks, mate. I've got to love you and leave you. I've got to go see Joe in, in, in their bookcase corner. It's you guys, surely. Thank you. Welcome to the arts and culture part of the show, bookshelf. Sorry? Welcome to the art and culture part yeah, of the yeah. show, Is it cool? bookshelf. Bookshelf, a uh, bookshelves, Joe. Uh, book, book shelf, bookshelves, basically. Bookshelves. Yes, you're clearly in front of a, a bushland bookcase there, and I'm in front of the old settler. So really, it's there's, there's two bookshelves here at least. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's called bookshelves. It's fitting probably that we call it bookshelves. Bookshelves or bookshelves? With an F. Bookshelf, bookshelves. Welcome to bookshelves. Bookshelves. With Joe oh, myself, right, with Joe you, myself. Right, bookshelves. bookshelves. On the show with Joe with bookshelves. Um, art and literature. God, we love it, don't we, Joe? Don't we, Joe? Both writers and both... Where, sorry? Pardon? Uh, what did you say? Welcome to the show, Joe and myself. Yeah. Um, Joe, art and literature. Art. Literature and art. The yeah. crossover there must be huge. The, I mean, the, are you inspired by paintings? Have you been inspired by other forms of art? Uh, purely personally, no. I, I'm, I'm very much a literary man. Uh, I know some people are. There's several books that have been based around paintings. And, uh, um, some people get inspired by music. I'm well aware of it. What was all that about? So it's just a fly going past here, Joe. Shouldn't bother you anymore. Carry on. Did you get it? Yes, I did. Well done. So where were we? I'm slightly flummoxed. Thank right. you. Um, just joining us, you're here with Bookshelf, with, with Joe and myself. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Computers, love them or hate them, you got to have one. How do you run it properly, though? Lance is here with Computer Tips. Lance, what's your tip of the day? Well, the tip today is that is to keep it simple. So, Thanks, Hans. Um, fantastic. Well, let's go to an ad break now, but in the meantime, ponder this. What's worse, catching your cleaner masturbating in your house or your cleaner catching you masturbating in your house? I think you might be quite surprised by the results. Let's see them after the break. Coming up, we're getting hot in the kitchen with Nadia and we've got music from the amazing Jazzmania. Right here! Well, welcome back to the show. We all love cars, don't we? You know, I, I couldn't give two shits about cars, to be honest. Uh, they don't interest me in, in, in the least. Welcome to the show now. Clive Matthew Wilson, editor of the um, car review website, Dog and Lemon. Um, Matthew, welcome to the show. Well, it's kind of Clive, actually, but, you know. <sighs> Clive Matthew. Clive Matthews. Matthew. Clive. Clive Matthew. Matthew Clive. Matthew, Matthew Clive, Clive Wilson. Wilson. Clive Matthew hyphen Wilson. Oh, it's okay. a hyphen? Okay, so Clive... It's no, Matthew... It's Cli I think, Jace, you'll find it's... Correct me, if I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew. I mean, Clive... Clive Matthew, Matthew Wilson. Wilson. That's correct. Matthew. We just run the Clive. Yeah, Clive is fine. Okay, so what issues do you see in New Zealand um, with our roading, this kind of thing? You must be, you know, have thoughts on that kind of thing. New Zealand is a country drivers. You know, like a farmer who's going to the store, he intends to go to the store, park outside the store, come back. He's not expecting other cars to be on the road. No, exactly. and, and still, even in Auckland, you kind of go, OK, I'll just go, there's all these other cars here. What are these other cars doing here? Um, I well, mean, we, we have the highest rate of car ownership in the world, I believe, in terms of uh, per capita. We own the most cars per capita of any... I mean... Is that a proper stat? Or? I have no idea. But, um, but, but what would you do, though, on the motorway? I mean, would you put another lane, say, for Asian drivers? Well, a lot of those, a lot of, this is not a racist stereotype. I mean, please, there are wonderful Chinese drivers, but the problem with, with stereotypes is they're often not accurate. 
You know, it's like assuming that Negroes know how to dance, right? A um, lot do they? Uh, I, a lot do and a lot don't. Should there be another lane for Negro dancers? Well, the, you could have another lane for Negro dancers. I mean, you know, there's some very good and some very bad Asian drivers, but as a general, you know, stereotype, it's ridiculous. So you're saying there are some very bad, bad Asian drivers? Yeah, and some very good Asian drivers. It's just that you don't notice the good ones because okay. they don't hit things. How about women then, Asian women? Should there be a separate lane for, say, Asian woman drivers? Or all women. Well, I think that's going a bit far, I don't think, Jase. Well, possibly it is, but I think if you're going to go in that direction, you might as well go the whole hog. In that direction? That direction. Okay. Well, you know, like I said, you know, this, the, you don't notice the women that drive well because they don't hit things. You only notice the ones that hit things, and there you go, hey, look, it's an Asian woman who sits something. They must all be So bad. you're saying they should be then? No, I'm saying that I don't think it's very good use of taxpayers' money, but hey, you know, let's not, let's not impose limits on any one race. I'm going to bring someone in on this. Joe, uh, Joe Bennett, you're still over there in, in bookshelves and, and hard furnishings. Yes, I am, Lee. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, thoughts on this? Thoughts on what? Well, the drivers over here from Asia, Joe. Uh, the Asian driver issue. Well, what do you mean by Asian? Well, you mean Indian? You mean Chinese? Do you mean Japanese? What, what do you mean Filipino? What do you mean? All of them. All of them. So all, all of them drive in the same way and, in your opinion, poorly. Is that right? I never said that, Joe. Right, but if you're saying if you're saying there is an issue, Lee, then you're implying that there is some sort of problem with people from 25 diverse countries, all of whom, according to you, can't drive. Is that true? I think you made your point, Joe. Thanks, mate. <sighs> what a lot of people yeah. don't understand is by racially stereotyping with Chinese drivers, for example, but you find that from the Guangzhou province, uh, the driving is quite different than yeah, uh, Xuan yeah, or yeah. Uh, Zhengzhou yeah. or uh, people from the Zhuangdou you find are very fast drivers, uh, whereas um, in Xingxiao, um, the people drive a lot slower because there are less cars on the road, so they're not used to making decisions coming and up. And horses, it's a horses for courses situation. Yeah. Hold, hold that thought, Clive. Um, we're heading out to the car park now to put a lot of this to test. Are uh, Asian drivers, in fact, worse than your average um, Kiwi driver? Well, I'm heading out there now to... Um, Put that to the test right here and right now. It's Hi guys, I'm out in the car park now with Mike. Uh, we're doing the driver challenge here. Uh, Mike will be representing Asia or Asian drivers. Uh, myself, I'll be representing other drivers who aren't Asian in this case. The challenge is, of course, simply drive the car through the cones, past these cones, and park up. That's the first challenge. Um, Mike, we, we decided that you're going to go first. Good luck. Sweet ass. Thanks, mate. You know, if you spend any time in Asia like I have, the first thing you kind of realise just how many Asian people live over there. And um, there's a lot of cars and a lot of driving, so there's no reason that Mike shouldn't, um, certainly in this first stage of the challenge, do pretty well, fellas. Let's have a look. He looks relaxed. A bit of speed up there. He seems fine with it. OK, interesting. Good effort. Right, OK. Well, there we go, Mike. Not bad at all, not bad at all. H how did you feel? Oh, I feel sweet as. Sweet as. There you go. My turn now. Let's see if I can do any better. It's going on tonight! Well, it's not too bad, really. Let's see that off for safety. Maybe came that second cone a little bit hot, so what I'm going to try and do is just kind of take it easy in the beginning and then just kind of peel it off, but... Well, that's pretty inconclusive. Jeremy, what's happening in pillows, cushions and haberdashery? Thanks very much, guys. Perhaps there's no jazz ensemble currently performing in New Zealand's vibrant jazz scene that's hitting its strides quite as much as jazz mania. So tonight on The Late Night Big Breakfast is Jesse Bradshaw and Mike Walker from Jazz Mania. Are the shark hats pretty teeth there? And he shows them pearly white Just a jackknife has a big heat deal And he keeps it way out of sight You know when that shot I'm not the back of that, actually. With his scarlet billows They begin to spread
Fantastic. Welcome back to the Late Night Big Breakfast. Like it or loathe it, finance <clears throat> is a major part of everybody's life, so that's why we've dedicated an entire section of the Late Night Big Breakfast to money, called Money Chat. And it's my great pleasure to welcome Professor Ananesh Chowdhury to the soft furnishing section. Uh, good evening. Thank you very um, much. I might just interrupt you there, um, Professor. We're just going to go to information. Hey, you. Life moving a little too fast for you? Finding it hard to fit in all those things that you find important? Well, get your life and lost time back with the Sandwich Buddy. Sandwich Buddy is a simple solution that allows you to easily eat a sandwich while carrying out everyday tasks. A Sandwich Buddy is ideal for sandwiches, paninis, elongated rolls, bacon buddies and most pastries. So get your life back with Sandwich Buddy. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. Welcome back to Money Chat, Dr Chowdhury. Uh, what is money? Uh, good question, Jeremy. Uh, well, economists actually have multiple definitions of money. Probably the easiest definition of money is uh, things you carry around in your wallet, which we call M1. Cash, coins, maybe your uh, checking account. It needs to be a legal tender, doesn't it? It does have to be legal tender, yes, yes. I don't know, I mean, in some senses, if you were in prison, your cigarettes could be money or... What about showgirls money? Um, I know I've got a whole lot of showgirls money and I've, I'm just wondering when the right time to convert it is. Um, I know the uh, exchange rate at the moment is not great for showgirls dollars. Mm -hmm. um, uh, six months, 12 months ahead, or should I hedge half now, half later on? It's a very good question because, I mean, as you know, it's a flattened out market. You've got those, those dollars. You can't use them anywhere but in, say, showgirls, your calendar girls, that kind of mm -hmm. place. And once you leave, that um, economic system, you can no longer use yes, those that's, dollars. That, that is correct. Does yes. there need to be a yes. separate exchange yes. where you can take those dollars, like Jeremy was suggesting, and convert that at a rate back into your legal tender, your New Zealand dollar, your Hong Kong, your yen, your Yahtzee, if you know what I mean? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, should you send, spend it now? Should you wait for later? Well, it depends on what the market. You might need to get a few of the market. Yeah. I don't know. I, I would think mm. that if your, 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 your showgirls money might be more valuable in peak tourist season. So maybe December, January, February, when you have lots of people coming in. It needs to be laundered. And unfortunately, with that money, normally it's just laundered literally in your washing machine in your jeans at home. You know, you wake up or your wife finds the value in your pocket in the, in the washing machine. And then it's no good even at, at your showgirls, your calendar girls, your Pinkies bar, um, your... Uh, Mermaids. Muffin tray. Your Mustangs bar. The White House. Oh, trannies. Cleopatra's Rotorua. The Honey Pot. Stilettos. Stilettos. Brucey's. Brucey's. That's a burger place. Is it? Oh, is it? Mm. Um, we've gone slightly off piste here. Professor, thanks for joining us. Fantastic. Okay. We'll have you on the show um, in coming weeks, of course. Um, hopefully still here on Soft Furnishings because that's my, my favourite spot to do the show. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very um, much. Well, something certainly smells good in the kitchen. Let's check that out. Hey guys, well, I've got a fantastic brunch recipe today. Um, smoked salmon bagels with crushed Yum. avocado, some um, cherry tomatoes mm. and scrambled eggs. Really simple. Cook the man some fucking eggs, bitch! <laughs> Okay, um, so you start with the scrambled eggs. Once we're wise. Thanks, start with your, your yes, scrambled eggs. So you need about oh, four sorry, eggs uh, for a few Jace, people. you need it in soft furnishings, I'm afraid. Oh. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, Nadia. That's, um, I think we'll just leave it there, to be honest. Um, if you want the full recipe, Nadia's salmon bagel recipe, go to the website. It's all there. And of course, the book's been re released. Check that out as well. Do you want me to get no. the eggs? No. It's okay, it's fine. No? Okay. It's beautiful. It's <laughs> Well, it's that time of the show now where we go to Tim Bat to look at the weather. Tim, we've got you in a box there standing by. Um, just stand by. How's it, how's it going out there? Guys, it's going great. I'm here in central Auckland. Very excited to bring you the next Fantastic. National I'm just going to bring today. Jason in the box here beside you. No, no you won't see him. He's, he's, he's just here beside you. He, he's going to ask you something. Yeah, good day, Tim. Um, great to have you back on the show. Hey, Jason, speak so loud. You're right beside him now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is he in the box next to me? You're right beside you. Hey, Tim. Lee, Excuse are me, you in the box? I'm here. Uh, can you put me in a box as well, please? Uh, Jason, can I have my own box? I thought you were in my box. No, no, we're in a box together, but I'd like my own box. 
You don't want a two-shot box? No, no, I want a single box. Well, that'd be a weird shape, wouldn't it? What? It'd be a weird shape, two-shape. And I'm not interested in this telestrated line. I want a proper box for myself. Could we have a three-way? I don't want a three-way. You don't that want a three-way? That would be more of a rectangle, wouldn't it? OK, let's bring Guy Montgomery and see if we can make it a four-way. Uh, well, it's actually a five-way now. No, it's four-way. There's Joe in. Uh, do you want to bring Joe in? Yeah, bring Joe, Joe we're in. we're bringing you in, in a box, separate box, off the side. Can I'm you, in a box. Can you see us? Can I go to the top of the screen? You want to shuffle up? Yep. Top of the screen, please. Jeremy likes to shuffle up, but that means uh, someone's going to have to move across right. and make space for him. Jase, you move down. Celebrity squares. Well, I'm not happy being on the bottom, but um, how about I go into the middle? We have a quick shot of the wide shot of all of us on the couch oh, in the one box, just for a sec. Yeah, that's too good, it's too small. Yeah, hey, just dip, go back to our normal boxes. I think what the problem is here, we've got five Look, boxes. Right, okay. Why are we doing the boxes anyway? Right, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Let's what just go back to, to the standard well, we'll, leave it box. Box. we'll leave it, okay. Tim. Uh, how's the weather out there? It's looking good. Fantastic. Thanks, mate. OK. Well, there you go. Amazing what you can do with technology. Oh, sure a big show like this. Mm -hmm. With a bit of a budget for a change. Um, used wisely, of course. Hey, thanks for watching tonight. What a great show we've had. Well, that's Jay us, New Zealand. Thank you so much for your company. We've really loved having you on the Late Night Big Breakfast. It's New Zealand show. Oh, that's the people. show oh, that you... you? No, you go, Jeremy. Yeah, no, you, Jeremy. Thanks very much for tuning in to the Late Night Big Breakfast. We'll see you next week. Can I say how much fun I'm having working with you two again? What an absolute privilege. Before you finish that, can I just say how much I'm enjoying working with you as well, though, Jason? Sure. And Jeremy. Sure. Mm. And I'll tell you what else. Thank you, New Zealand. Thank you for watching the show because the chemistry that we're feeding off is coming all from you. You're right, Jace, because without the listeners, without the viewers, uh, the show we're would nothing. be nothing. We're nothing. We're nothing. We're nothing. We're nothing. I just to add to that, though, as well, uh, not just the New Zealand viewers, our international viewers. Mm. A lot of you coming in, downloading this illegally, we don't mind, mm. as long as you're watching it. Um, Jace, you'll be uh, manning the Facebook tonight for a couple uh, well, of I'll be on Facebook, so please get in touch. Uh, love to hear from you. Um, big part of our show. See you next week. This episode was brought to you by Sandwich Buddy. If you live life on the run, this is ideal for eating sandwiches, pastries and most soft shell tacos. And Rectosol Anal Paste. Get your life and your freedom back with Rectosol. Now with the new streamlined applicator. And let's hear it for the music from the amazing Jazz Mania. Finally, if you watch the show at somebody else's house, take it easy on the way home. And we'll see you again next week. It's